Hey everybody, we have another experiment today. And what we're going to be doing is comparing paid versus free plugins in a phase cancellation test to see just how they compare to each other. You know, some instances it may be worth spending 200, 300 bucks on a plugin. Uh, some instances the freeware might be able to match the paid plugin. So I'm going to take you through a few. We're going to do a phase cancellation test and see just what kind of results we get. So the ones we're going to be comparing are the FabFilter Pro Q3 with the stock EQ that comes with PreSonus Studio One. Uh, after that, we're going to be comparing the FabFilter Pro MB with the Tokyo Dawn TDR Nova, as well as the the Pro MB to the Pro Q with the dynamic feature of the Pro Q3. After that, we'll compare the stock flanger and the waves meta flanger. Uh, after that, we have the Sound Toys Echo Boy versus the stock delay that comes with Reaper. And then we're going to wrap up by doing some saturation plugins, uh, specifically FabFilter Saturn 2 the Sound Toys Decapitator, as well as the free Audio Assault Head Crusher. So let's uh, let's get right into it. So the way we're going to be conducting the test is by having duplicate instances of a track, and then we are going to flip the phase and see if we can hear anything or not with the only difference being the two plugins we're comparing, such as the Pro Q3 versus the stock EQ that comes with Studio One. Identical settings and everything, so the only difference will be where the plugin came from, not the settings at all. So the first thing we're going to listen to is a gutter roll that I took for an upcoming song that I'm working on. So let's hear what that sounds like without any plugins at all. This is how the mic captured it. Let's take a listen. <laughs> And then let's add all the effects. We have an EQ to boost some highs, cut some lows, and a high pass filter, as well as JST gain reduction for compression. Uh, all of those go into a bus with the Sound Toys decapitator for some saturation and distortion, as well as a blank version of the Pro Q3. So in the events that these do not completely cancel out, we'll be able to have a graphic representation of what remains. So with all of the effects on, including the ones on the bus, let's take a listen to what we have. <laughs> Alright, so the first thing we'll do is turn everything off because I want to show you something interesting that uh, when I was messing around with this earlier and I decided to do it on gain reduction just for fun, I found out that uh, not everything canceled out. So I, I guess first off I should prove that these tracks are identical. So we're flipping the phase on the ones with the stock EQ. And as a result, we should hear absolutely nothing right now. Yep, they completely cancel each other out. And if we take it off, then we have full volume. So when I was messing around with a gain reduction, and I'll, I'll do it for you guys just to prove that I'm not a crazy person, is I took one instance and put the exact same settings across all the other tracks in this group. And I found out that those did not completely cancel out, despite the exact same settings. Take a listen and uh, watch the graph. Now, 
Now, I have no idea why that is, but I thought it was really interesting. Uh, it could possibly be because there's a delay in one instance of the plugin reacting to the to the signal but even if we pull up uh let's pull up these because these channels uh play first so let's actually watch the needle and see if there's a difference No, those reacted exactly the same. Uh, same settings and everything. And I, I still don't know why that is. So if that's going to interfere, let's go ahead and turn that off. And let's just go back to a normal phase cancellation with no effects. All right, so let's bring on the EQs. Uh, let's go over the exact settings I have for FabFilter, as well as the stock EQ from Studio One. So the first thing we have is a high pass at 112 hertz, uh, the Q at one and 12 decibels per octave. Uh, here we have 112, 12 decibels per octave, but there was not an option to adjust the Q for the high pass. That's the only difference between these two. Here we have 270 at negative 2.54. Here we have 270, negative 2.54. And here we have 3.45K at 1.93. And the exact same. So exact same settings, uh, gain reduction off. Uh, double check that. Yep, we have the phase flips. So let's see if these have identical settings, if the result is the same. Let's listen. Okay, they do not completely cancel each other out. Um, how about we bypass the two and see if there's a difference. Nope, I'm hearing absolutely nothing. So let's take all of the settings, take them out, and let's see if we can bring them in one by one and see where the differences begin. So EQs are both active. EQs are both active, so let's see if we hear anything. Absolutely nothing. All right, so let's bring in this one and see if there's a difference. There is. Oh, well, I also brought in these as well, so that would skew the results. Okay, let's try this again. Yeah, there is still a difference. So let's turn these off because those don't cancel each other out. Let's go with, with this cut and see if we have the same thing. We do have the same thing. All right, let's try it with the high cut. I mean, the boost. Yeah, still the exact same thing. And I'm going to double check that I have all these at the same settings because I definitely should. So let's just... uh. Let's actually just bring these in one by one because if none of the EQ moves matter, then we'll start at a completely phase canceled uh, sounds and then we'll be able to hear the identical sounds continue 
uh, despite what we bring in. So let's start with the lower one. So those do not cancel out. That's interesting. Well, let's go to the uh, the Pro Q and see exactly what that sounds consists of. All right, so that is what we are left with. So let's view that versus uh, versus without the phase cancellation. That's interesting. They are not canceling out. And what we are left with is... Uh, Definitely a quieter sounds, but it also loses the low ends. We're just left with kind of a higher thing around uh, 2.6K. Now, what does what does this mean? Like, is this a big deal? Is FabFilter worth the price versus the freeware plugin? Well, let's uh, pull up another free plugin, uh, the Ulean Loudness Meter. Uh, I use this to make sure that all of my mixes are within the LUFS range that uh, that platforms require to make sure that my mixes aren't turned down or altered in any other way. So let's see exactly how loud this phase canceled results is to see if it even matters. It looks like we're around negative 40 integrated. So is that important enough? Is one plugin worth using over the other? In this specific instance where we're just boosting and cutting, I'm going to say there is no difference, and here's why. Negative 40.5 LUFS is definitely loud enough to be heard. But depending on the type of mix you're doing, so for example, I mix metal. I do that a lot. And what it comes down to is, are other instruments going to cover it up? And if we have something this low in volume, absolutely, this is going to be covered up by the cymbals, by the distorted guitar, and by vocals as well. So in my case, if this was a metal mix, this doesn't make a difference. But on the other hand, if your mix consists of, let's say, a piano and a vocal, or an acoustic guitar and a vocalist, then it will matter. So... I left gain reduction off because I knew that would boost the differences, but let's see what the result is when we turn that on. Okay, I'm noticing that I'm actually seeing the pops around negative 200. Watch again, right here. That's interesting. That's so interesting. And then just for the heck of it, let's turn on the decapitator and uh, see what happens. So 
So yeah, it's uh so Fab Filter versus the stock EQ. In this case, no difference. Because all we are doing is cutting and boosting. Now, however, I will note that Fab Filter has a lot more features than the stock EQ does, such as the uh, dynamic EQ, and such as being able to link multiple instances of these and be able to view potential problem areas that way. I understand that. But this test is to show the qualities of the EQs themselves, to show that if you bought the Pro Q3 to do all of the exact same things that you could do with the stock EQ, is that worth the price of having the Fab Filter badge in your DAW? Uh, for cutting and boosting, I'm willing to say there is no difference because at negative 40 LUFS, if you have a dense mix with a lot of other instruments that take up the entire spectrum, then there's really not much of a difference in this case. We're going to view other cases right now. So the next one is the Fab Filter Pro MB versus the Freeware TDR Nova. Now, the reason that these are different is I noticed when I was applying the same settings to the TDR Nova, uh, the band is in the exact same place. So, 1465, 1465. Um, I noticed that where the, where the range ends, we have 355 hertz and 6k essentially and that's what i inserted here because based on the actual graph here it appears that the actual uh whatever this would be called seems to end uh just under 200k and it looks identical here but i wanted to make sure that the actual bands that are in play have the same the same limitations to ensure that if these did not cancel out that it wasn't because I set up the experiment wrong. So I matched the threshold at negative 18, negative 18. Uh, I can show you that the, uh, the ratio was four to one. I matched that here. Now the attack and release times, those I wasn't able to match I left these at the defaults and these at the default because the attack and release times on the fab filter are shown in percentages. So that's why that is. But the one difference I'll also take note is that the TDR Nova has a Delta feature so you can hear what's being taken out. The, the fab filter does not, at least not one that I could find. So let's uh, let's go through the mix and see exactly what we're working with. So this is a vocal where I wanted to have a telephone radio effect for it. So what I have here is identical instances of the Q3, gain reduction, uh, Fab filter Saturn, and then the only difference is going to be, well, actually in this case we'll have to take uh, gain reduction out of the equation since we found out that it uh, couldn't be trusted. So maybe it can in this case. Let's see. It cannot. All right. So if we have identical instances of the EQ and Saturn. Do these cancel out completely? They do. All right, so identical instances of the EQ and identical instances of Saturn. So that also tells me that in the first test with the Pro Q3 
in the pro EQ that the reason they might not have canceled out is because they're working under different algorithms. So now we have a test where we found out that this EQ can cancel out provided the exact same settings, but also the exact same manufacturer. So keep that in mind during this. So let's, uh, let's start with the TDR Nova as well as the Pro MB. So face flipped on one, the only difference of things that won't cancel out are the Pro MB and the TDR Nova. Those are the only different variables. Saturn will, the Pro Q3 will. Let's see what we hear. It does not cancel out. Now, that could be because of the differences in how these are built, the algorithms, as well as there may have been faults on my end for not setting this up uh, as accurately as I could. And that's another, another thing with this experiment, is to see not only will these cancel out, but if you have a certain goal in mind, how close can you manipulate a freeware VST to I to get it to sound with identical settings to a paid version. So let's uh let's go through. So the goal of this after the effect I put on it the world that's in my hands! was that it sounded way too harsh with Saturn. And keep in mind, gain reduction is off, so it would be even more noticeable. So the goal was to use a multi-band uh, compression to help smooth it out. So let's see if the TDR Nova helps with that. Remember, we're not even comparing the Pro MB. We're trying at this point. We're trying to see what tool works best to smooth this out and make it sound less harsh to the ear. The world that's in my hands. So we see it reacting, but it still sounds extremely harsh to my ears. And let's put it in delta mode to see what's being taken out. The world that's in my hands! The world that's in my hands! Okay, so it is taking things out, but it's still super, super harsh. So let's see if the Pro MB uh, did a better job. Not really. It still sounds harsh across the monitors. I'm using Kali LP6s. And so neither of these really did really accomplish the goal I was looking for. And even the phase cancellation test, uh, let's actually see what what we're dealing with. So let's flip the phase. And this Pro Q is attached to the multiband bus, so we can see exactly what we're left with when we do a phase cancellation of those two tracks. Alright, so that is nowhere close to a phase cancellation. But I will note that there is a giant section missing from the low ends. And that's natural considering we were trying to use the multibands from 355 hertz to 6.03 hertz. So this area here, so 355 and below and 6.03 and above, should be completely face canceled with the possible exception of this. And that's kind of what we saw. So the multiband versus the TDR Nova. Uh, in this instance, I can't say for sure because neither of them uh, accomplished 
what I was trying to get done. So maybe if we drag this down more, uh, negative 30 seems to be the limitation of it. How about the TDR Nova? We can go to negative 50. All right, but let's go to 30. And if this doesn't cancel out in phase, then I'm going to apply the high and the low pass filters just so we can see. So let's see what this does. That is extremely unpleasant. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, let's uh do that one more time since the high pass and low pass uh, were not the answer in this case. And let's see what we are left with. There really wasn't much of a difference. We still have the same dip here and the same 2K spike. So even with that being the case, I still don't... Uh, I still wouldn't prefer one or the other at this point. So what we'll do now is we will compare... Uh, fab filter to fab filter, uh, specifically the Pro Q3 versus the Pro MB. Both have dynamic EQ features. So the question is, would one be better than the other? Because I've seen people uh, ask, why would I need the Pro MB if the Pro Q3 has a dynamic EQ feature and the main reason that I found is that the Pro MB has attack and release times the 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 Pro Q3 does not you're left with whatever whatever it is so let's yep we have the face flipped on that start at the beginning and let's see which one we prefer well, actually, let's start with which one cancels out first. Alright, so they are not canceling out. Uh, let's see what we're left with. So what this is showing is that we're not having that uh, upward upward thing in the low ones below 20 hertz, which means that had to have been from the from the Nova. But now let's uh let's solo the Pro Q3 and see if that helped make it smoother since that was the original goal. Oh, that's in my head. No, it did not. So what I'll do is I'll add identical settings that were on the TDR Nova because maybe it's maybe that harshness is not coming from the dynamic EQ section. Maybe we needed a low pass up here. Let's take a listen. That's exactly what I was hearing. And that's the result I wanted. So in this specific case, the the Fab Filter Pro Q3, in my opinion, and in this specific case, beat out the TDR Nova and the Pro MB for smoothing out uh, the effects of Saturn and uh, the, another Pro Q3 and the gain reduction for a smooth radio like lo-fi kind of voice and that was the goal for it so what i also want to do real fast is i'm going to turn off the pro mb and compare nova 
since now that we know it was the uh, the high and low pass that helps make it sound smoother, how does the Nova Dynamic EQ compare to the FabFilter Pro 3 with the phase flips? So we have pretty much nothing below 100 hertz, whereas before we did. Uh, that's thanks to the high and low pass filters we applied on both, but the dynamic uh, EQ sections are not identical. Again, because the Pro-Q3 does not have uh, adjustable attack and release features where the TDR Nova does. Uh, however, both of them are at their default settings when I opened the plugin. The only thing I changed was where uh, the beginning of the dynamic EQ ended, like where the actual center of it began, as well as the high passes. Those are the only difference. So what would be the winner in this case? Well, uh, in this case, the FabFilter Pro-Q3 uh, once again takes it. And the only reason it takes it in this case is because my goal was to smooth out what I already had. The multiband didn't do that. Even when I dropped it to as low as I could. And the Nova didn't do that either. But that doesn't mean that these won't help in other instances you may face. But this also goes to show that this is why it's important to have multiple uh, different options to choose from. Like if you've ever seen a mix tutorial on YouTube, Nail the Mix, whatever it may be, some of these guys will use three or more different compressors on the same mix. And what that does is it gives them versatility as well as many more options to choose from. So in this case, we have the Nova. We have the MB. And we have the Pro-Q3. Now, all of these have a dynamic EQ feature. And we experimented with three options looking for a solution to help us smooth over sounds and it turns out that the pro q3 works better than these two now that doesn't mean that these two are worthless because even though this works the best say we needed a faster attack time say too many transients were getting through well this one you can't adjust it so that's out then you're left with these. So even the one that ended up victorious in this situation has limitations. Not to mention what you could do is use them in conjunction. Like say you wanted a faster attack and release. Well, maybe put the TDR Nova or the MB on first and then put the Pro-Q3 second. You know, there's there's nothing that says you can't do that. Nothing at all. So let's move on to flangers. We will use the, the stock flanger that comes with Studio One as well as the Waves meta flanger. Now I tried to match these as best I could but some things I was not able to. Uh, for example, the delay at 4 milliseconds. I hope this is <laughs> in milliseconds also. Uh, the LFO width, that was not on here. Uh, the rate versus speed is identical. But given that one of these has so many more features than the other, and that's the defaults, uh, flanger doesn't have uh, 
basically what I'm trying to say is that these don't all have identical parameters, which means I'm not able to match these as much as I would like to. So if you can already see where this is going, let's flip phase and let's see what happens. The world that's in my hands! The world that's in my hands! The world is in my hands! So that did... That did absolutely nothing. So... What was the goal here? Let's say the goal was just to have a flanger effect. So let's see which one does it better. The world that's in my hands! The world that's in my hands! The world is in my hands! Alright, so that was... That one I wasn't a fan of whenever I turned it all the way up because I was hearing the effects pop through instead of it being integrated into the vocal. So let's try the meta flanger. Well, let's uh activate it. The world that's in my hands! The world that's in my hands! The world that's in my hands! So there, it's a lot more integrated in the vocals. Listen again. The world that's in my hands! The world that's in my hands! Like, there, I can tell it's an effect. So, me personally, I like the meta flanger on this one. In this instance, as an effect. So... Especially for the vocals, I was looking for one that was more, not necessarily in your face, but you could immediately tell that there was an effect. Whereas the the stock flanger uh, was kind of more of a subtle one. So that could be great for subtle effects, kind of like using a chorus to thicken up a vocal. You could use this flanger for that also. But also at the same time, you could just turn down the gain of this one and achieve a similar results. Whereas if you wanted to use the stock flanger for one that had more of an aggressive effect, you couldn't necessarily do that. So stock versus paid, I would go with the Waves meta flanger for this one. Uh, they did not cancel out because the effect of one was a lot higher than the other. Uh, even though these were matched on the faders, that's just something that's they they just don't compare. And that's another thing with these paid plugins. A lot of the time, they're just not going to compare because sometimes there just isn't anything like the paid version out there. Take Soothe, for example. I haven't personally seen anything that does what it does and nothing that even comes close and that's why it's used so much so let's go with uh with some delays right now and we are going to go with the sound toys echo boy and we are going to compare that with the stock delay that comes with reaper i believe it is I could I could be wrong about that. So again, one is one has a lot more parameters than the other one does. Uh, this one we can tap the tempo, and we can go with a quarter note if we wanted to. Whereas for this one, I went to a website, the Nick Fever Delay Calculator. Uh, entered the BPM there and it it did the math for me and said okay for a quarter note with a tempo about 135 this is the number in milliseconds that each delay needs to happen at you know with this it was just a matter of inserting the tempo choosing the note and you're good 
And that's that's another thing with these plugins. If you have the goal in mind and you know what you want to do, then it's a matter of convenience also. But is that worth a couple hundred bucks in all instances? No, it isn't because we all have to start somewhere. So let's let's listen to what how each of these sound on their own. And then we will flip the phase on one of them and see what the result is. So this is the Sound Toys Echo Boy. <laughs> All right, and now we'll go with the Reaper delay. All right, so right off the bat, I hear they're doing different things. So my prediction is that the actual source audio will cancel out and all we're going to be left with is the actual delays and just to show that I didn't alter uh, any of the settings down here this is the default for the studio tape style and the only thing I messed with on this delay was uh, the feedback at negative 18.1 as well as the actual length time, length delay time in milliseconds. So let's go ahead and uh, flip the phase on the Reaper delay. Let's pull up the Pro Q3 and let's see what the graph looks like. <laughs> All right, so they didn't cancel out. And then just to cover all of our bases, I'll flip the phase again. And we can hear what it sounds like where they're both on top of each other. <laughs> so it's the same basic shape. The only thing I'll take note is that the, the low ends uh, at 65 hertz and below was originally down here. So there was some low end cancellation. And uh, I'll check the Reaper delay because I know there was a high and low pass on that. Okay, so the high pass was 545 hertz for the delay. So that tells me that the source audio canceled out in the low end to some degree. But my ear is telling me that there really wasn't a difference. And then let's take the effects off, flip the phase on one, and we should hear nothing. Exactly. So that's what happens and what was fed into each of these delays uh, did not cancel out. That's what I'm noticing. So we're at it again. Uh, does, does the Echo Boy win or does the, or does the other delay win, the Reaper delay? And it really depends. As another trend with these with these paid plugins, and even though I do this is the effect rack, uh, I'm I'm solely judging this on if we just had the Echo Boy. But still, we have all of these these effects we can do. We have all of this versatility where we can gain decay. Uh, we can even choose types. So if, if you're just starting out, 
and th- this is my advice to every mixer who's just starting out. If you're just starting out, get these freeware plugins first. All right, do not drop hundreds on stuff like this if you're just starting out because it's not going to help you. All right, just because it's going to help you in the long run doesn't mean that's what you should start off with. All right, because yes, it's cool to see all these knobs. Yes, a lot of professionals use sound toys, but they do it for a reason. It's because they were ready for it. All right, if you're just learning, you have to take things a step at a time. All right, you don't want to just get thrown into get thrown into these expensive plugins like the Pro Q3. Because most likely what's going to happen is the features such as the graph and the dynamic EQ, you're most likely going to start off using those as a crutch. And the unsung hero of these freeware plugins is that you have to train your ear in order to use them. And if you don't have a good ear and you're relying on software to tell you everything that you need to know everything to turn down everything to bring up you're not gonna make it to the professional level as fast as you want to all right because if software was capable of doing the mixing for us there wouldn't be a need for people like you and me you know i've seen ads for ai programs that claim to master music for you you know, I don't know how good those those are. I've never tried it. But just because technology is advanced enough to this point doesn't mean it should be used as a crutch just because it takes time to develop your ear. Because if you have the goal in mind for what you want each of your tracks to do, you are going to make it so much further and you're going to make much better decisions that someone who drops thousands of dollars on these plugins and is using them as a crutch rather than a means of efficiency. All right, just something to think about. And then lastly, we are going to focus on saturation. So the plugins we are going to be comparing, we have FabFilter Saturn 1, we have the Sound Toys Decapitator. And for the Freeware VST, we have the Audio Assault Head Crusher. Now, the Head Crusher was my first introduction to saturation, where I could experiment and determine what it did. And then once I needed absolute control and precision because I heard that I wanted to add it somewhere, that's when I chose to upgrade to Saturn. Okay, but the Head Crusher is more than capable of giving you a great start. All right, is it just as capable of Sat- as Saturn? Is it just as capable as Saturn? Well, let's find out. So the first thing we'll do is we will listen to what Saturn does to the track. We have a bass track here. So let's see what that sounds like. Note that this is only at 30% because that's the closest I was able to match it to the decapitator in terms of phase cancellation. So I could boost it all the way, we would hear the difference, but we also want to be able to hear the subtle differences as well. You know, like that setting is insane. Like I would hope no one would ever make a bass sound like that.
All right, and let's compare it to the head crusher. And keep in mind with the head crusher, uh, it has a range of 20 hertz to 22 hertz, and those are in the default positions with the tone in the middle. And, and in Saturn, I did not add any separation at all. So the uh, the 30% of the drive is being applied to the whole spectrum here. So let's hear what Head Crusher does. All right, so it's adding saturation to both. So let's flip the phase and let's see if we hear anything. Okay, I am hearing no low end at all. So let's pull up the Pro Q3 and see if see what it shows yeah so this dip right here So let's uh let's compare the head crusher to the sound toys decapitator. So what the decapitator sounds like is this. What I'm going to do is bring Head Crusher in and I'm going to slowly increase the drive and we'll see if if that alters the sound at all. So I'm not hearing a difference uh, with that effects uh, bypassed or not. So that's really not doing anything that I hear. Yeah, no. So actually just for the heck of it, let's compare uh, Saturn to the Decapitator. Flip the phase on their decapitator and see what that does. <laughs> How about that? That's interesting. So Fab Filter versus Sound Toys. That's actually really close to can that's well not really close to cancellation, but that's the closest I've heard. Yeah, so it's really not a volume issue. Uh, what happens if we turn up the drive on the decapitator? Now what was it at? Mm -hmm. 
All right, let's go to Saturn now. It's getting quieter. That's nuts. So actually, uh, pay attention to the saturation bus. And as I bring in the decapitator, pay attention to how much it drops in volume. That's absolutely nuts. I did not, if anything, I thought, <laughs> I don't even know what I'm trying to say. I I had a feeling that Saturn and the Decapitator would would outperform the Head Crusher, but I never expected Saturn and the he and the Decapitator to be so close. That's nuts. So let's pull up the uh, the loudness meter and see what readings we get in volume drop with this. So negative 33 LUFS to negative 19. That's a difference in 14 LUFS of volume. Now to my ear, I'm still like, it's not completely canceling out, but that is significant. What does the graph show? Yeah, so this I'm hearing. So I am hearing the higher stuff up here. And yeah, that's that's kind of how I was picturing it. So, wow, that is... That's the most surprising thing out of this experiment, in my opinion, that Saturn and the Decapitator are pretty close. Uh, the only difference in drive uh, to note, at least on the uh, on the settings of a warm tape and A, is that we have a setting of just under one and a half versus just above 30%. Now, keep in mind that uh, Saturn has a bunch of different uh, distortion slash saturation uh, settings, and uh, the decapitator does also. So let's actually switch between these and see if anything works better. No, so it looks like, uh, if anything, uh, the first setting on the decapitator matches closely with the warm tape. Uh, let's let's have some fun and try to match. Uh, well, let's actually go through all of the settings. <laughs> That's a much bigger volume drop. Now, keep in mind, we're keeping the drive of both the exact same. I just want to see what, uh, see what matches best with what in terms of phase cancellation. So if you see someone with a decapitator and they have a certain setting on the first channel here, and all you have is Saturn, then you can write down these settings and match it, uh, in theory. 
sounds like it matches it with clean tape the best. Yeah, aside from that boost and low ends, that's kind of what I was hearing with A and the, uh, the first setting. Now we're starting to uh, <laughs> get to the point of of Saturn where we're approaching rectify and destroy. So I'm I'm starting to think in terms of phase cancellation, we might have found all of the best combinations, uh, which apparently seems to be two of them. But let's uh, let's keep going and make sure. actually not a bad one either. Yeah, th this setting would take third place so far because we've gotten down to negative 33 before. Rectify and destroy. <laughs> I'm guessing this isn't going to go uh, in a completely phase canceled direction, but heck, let's try it. Okay. Alright, so in my opinion, uh, the closest these came to canceling out is clean tape at 30.36% drive and uh, and on the decapitator, uh, I'm going to say 1.4 or just under 1.5 on the first distortion setting. <laughs> Oh, this one's negative 38. Yeah, so th this is the closest you're going to get, provided you're doing gentle saturation. Uh, because these have their own algorithms, their own character, but... 
Oh, you know, I forgot to put the punish button on. Uh, I'll go back to a few of these. Maybe that'll help. That's uh, that destroyed it. All right, so this is the closest that uh, Saturn and the Decapitator will come to canceling each other out. Which really isn't bad, so... Uh, when it comes to the winner of these two... It really depends, and I know I keep saying it depends on what your goal is, but it also depends on what type of saturation you like because these operate on different algorithms. The most, so the most extreme setting on Saturn, let's pull that up and then we'll compare it to the most extreme setting on, uh, on the decapitator. Yeah, I mean, that's... So let's go punish. Let's go all the way up. You know, we, we might be able to match that to Saturn also, because that did sound kind of like something we had that might have taken care of the low end actually okay so Negative 27. So negative 27 to negative 30. Now that's not a bad reading in terms of LUFS volume. But keep in mind that this track is so saturated, so distorted that I'm pretty I'm pretty certain it will cut through a lot of instruments to the point where you're going to hear it. So I'm I'm not saying you should phase cancel these inside of the track. But in terms of showing how similar these plugins can get, the closest we got was not on the extreme settings. It was around that and on Saturn, was it 30.36? On the clean tube. You know, the less we hear when these are phase canceled, then that means the more they're alike. And what that's telling me uh, when we had these on the extreme setting is that the low ends uh, both plugins seem to have left that alone because it seemed to have canceled out. Because what saturation does is it enriches the sounds by adding harmonics. So let's actually put... Well, we have a pro Q. Uh, we're going to put a tone generator on this. And what we're going to do 
is I'm going to activate it. Saturation is off. And the more we increased the saturation, the more harmonics peaked up. Look at this. So here's the fundamental. And we had all of those harmonics peak up. So that's what saturation does. So let's, you know, let's actually do the same thing, but let's view it through the Pro EQ. That way we can kind of keep it. So just on the clean tube setting, so this is nothing, this is just the tone. Uh, 227, I think we set it to 221, but that's, that's close enough. So on the clean tube setting, this is what Saturn adds. All of these extra harmonics. And if we turn up the drive, listen to what happens. just for the heck of it. Okay. That's so interesting. <laughs> Look at that on this setting, it's just gone. Okay, do not put it on destroy. <laughs> so let's do the same thing with the decapitator and see what happens. So this is the sounds before any drive. Let's go through the distortion levels. making the harm the harmonics pretty much equal in size to the actual fundamental. So I don't even think it'd be fair to call it a harmonic anymore. It's just an, it's just another fundamental at this point. Interesting. Why does why is this one so much lower? Well, <laughs> I mean, how do you choose a winner between those? Uh, tone. Okay, that added a couple more. Uh, let's play with the drive.
Alright, now we have a lot more. <laughs> it's reading it as one solid thing, that's interesting. But that goes to show what saturation does. So say this is your guitar tone, and we want to bring these harmonics up to make it sound more clear, more saturated. You know, that's not necessarily something we can do with EQ. All right, so that is paid versus freeware plugins. Not only will they help you in terms of versatility, but they'll help you in terms of efficiency, provided you've taken the time to use freeware ones or built up your skills another way. So for example, with Saturn, if you know that you have a guitar, for example, that needs more distortion, then it's very easy to just add it like this in that specific section, if that's what you've determined. Whereas with the head crusher, you know, this says 20 hertz to 1,000. You know, you could do math to figure out the halfway point. But if you were really determined, then you could get this to work. But as we just experienced with the tone generator, as well as uh, Saturn versus the decapitator, that all three of these are different. None of them canceled each other out completely. Uh, but Sound Toys and Fab Filter came pretty close, which I was really surprised about. So, what would I recommend? So, say you've you've gotten the training, you know what to do, you know how to EQ, you know what goal you're looking for, you're just looking for the most efficient tool for the job. Uh, in that case. I would recommend Fab Filter as the go-to EQ because not only is it capable of, I believe, 36 bands, but compared to the stock EQ, this is only capable of a low, a high pass, and five others. So if there's a tenth thing that you want to do, you're going to have to add more than one instance of this EQ, which... I st which I've done before, that's what I started out doing whenever that wasn't an option. Uh, the Fab Filter also takes it in terms of the dynamic EQ. In this case, it was e it was able it was able to smooth out uh, the track, whereas the TDR Nova and the multi bands didn't fare as well. However, the TDR Nova has an edge where it has adjustable attack and release times where the Pro EQ does not. And however, the Pro MB, uh, you can add multiple instances. So say you wanted to have five bands, you couldn't do that with the TDR Nova, at least not the free version. This one has four. And then what do I think about stock flanger versus meta flanger? Meta flanger all day. This one, for what I wanted to use it for in this case, is much more present. It's not as subtle an effect. And if you wanted a subtle effect, all you would have to do is turn it down here and blend it into taste. So that combines with the versatility, changing the waveform, feedback, and it, and even all of these, these presets. And I know I always say stay away from presets, but if you're just starting out, this won't be a bad place to get ideas. All right, that doesn't necessarily mean you leave it in the final results, but it's just a kind of, it's a good stepping stone to get your wheels turning, especially if you've never used one before. Now, delay. If we just had the Echo Boy, um, yeah, that that's still... What I would recommend too. Uh, currently, this is the delay that 
I have on my personal mixes as of right now, as of September 2020. And that's because this was the easiest result to get. You know, I wasn't messing around with all of these uh, these other parameters, such as, you know, the style of the feedback, whether it's chorus, analog chorus, uh, delay, transmitter, shortwave, FM radio. You know, I'm at this point in time, I'm still not. I'm still not ready to make the switch because I still have a lot of stuff to learn here. So that's what I think about the Echo Boy uh, in terms of, and I'm going to look at it from the other side of the spectrum for a second, for the actual effect rack where it has the decapitator, micrologic, uh, transmitter, devil logic, crystallizer, all this other stuff. Yes, then I would definitely go for the effect rack because you don't have to load multiple instances in one you can just have one one effect but for the price of of what you get this for you know it's going to go on sale uh at various times throughout the year and i got this as an investment for the future because i'd rather spend you know i i got this on that 3 day sale for 99 bucks so i'd rather spend 99 bucks on however many are in here versus 200 alone on the decapitator and then most likely the exact same amount on the echo boy uh, same thing with the crystallizer and then build it up that way so this was an investment to kind of jump on in my opinion and then as far as sound toys versus fab filter in terms of saturation and distortion i would recommend both you know, they do overlap in the subtle, uh, the subtleties of their saturation and distortion, but they can also go to extremes and they have their own characteristics while doing it. So for the versatility alone, I wouldn't just stick with one, but if you're willing to build up your plugin collection over time, uh, just flip a coin and go with one of these two because you will not regret it. Now, just because I recommended the paid plugins for every single one, does that mean that the freeware or stock plugins don't have their place? Of course not. All right, the reason those are valuable is because you save money in the beginning. It's because you learn to build your skill sets with the limited options that the free plugins have. All right, and that's to help prepare you so when you have the option to use all these parameters with paid plugins, then you have a much better basis on what you're going to be facing. And there will be mixes where one instance of a plugin will be better than the other. So kind of like how the, the Pro Q3 won out in the Dynamic EQ contest, whereas the Pro MB and the TDR Nova didn't. You know, anything is possible in the world of audio. So this has been the paid versus free plugins face cancellation tests, and I will see you guys next time.